Okay, here's the plasma cutter setup so far. Uh, I have a file loaded and I have a sheet of aluminum just sitting there. It's just something for the plasma head to bottom on and zero. Um, over here, cabled into the hypertherm unit down here, there's a little torch height control module that's cabled into the back of the hypertherm unit and it's using a CAT5 network cable to carry the signal across to the hardware, the electronics up sitting on this computer station which is uh, uh, really just holding the computer, the monitor and all of the control. This big cable of wire I still plan to oh, separate and splice. Maybe I'll use um, a fuel injection cable connector. Maybe I'll just splice a male and a female socket right in here so I can connect this whole table on wheels and disconnect it whenever I want to roll it around from um, the main plasma table because it's on giant wheels that can take about 5,000 pounds of load. Um, everything's on wheels, even the uh, welding station and plasma cutting station. It's um, um, just rolling around the garage quite nicely. So what I've done is I've got all the homes uh, uh, wired in and adjusted. Here's a uh, an X home. Here's the a Y home right here. I've got a Y home uh, slaved with the A home because both sides of this axis are driven by two motors and a motor each side. And into that I've got uh, hard stops that are also adjustable by by bolt. And I also have hard stops um, on the X. Uh, of course here on the Y, the main Y. And way at the far end I've got a limit um, that is also wired and micro switched in and a hard stop. That um, is also though um, sort of a backup because I am running soft limits but those are pretty easy to screw up if you just reference wrong or set your zeros badly. I've loaded in um, a bracket. Here's a handmade bracket of what I need to cut. I need to cut uh, eight of these and probably I'll make hundreds more for people. They're limit straps bracket so they bolt your axles to the body of the vehicle. That one was just cut die grinder and a zip disc. Um, and here is um, a digital copy of it that I drew up in LibreCAD. It's a free software package. Uh, yes, I can use ProEngineer, Crew, Parametrics 2.0 that'll do it all, but this is the free way. This is Mach 3 running on the computer and um, I have power and motors running going um, just to the table. I have the G-code right here loaded in. The bracket is over here of course, so that G-code is representing that bracket. And I will just reference my XY, this little pointer right here, and you can see what happens. Just, just make sure everything's parked at zero. Okay. And um, we're ready to go. So over here, um, I can click Run. And then, there's a pause, a delay, and I think it's not getting a signal from the plasma cutter because it's turned off. So I've just tripped it. Um, it's at Pierce height right now. And that is the torch firing. It picks up, it moves to the next spot, lowers down pierce height. Pierced, now it cuts. And now it cuts the exterior pierce cut. And then it homes at the end of the job. So I have shot a couple of these and run a couple of these. You can see the scrapes where the uh, um, tip was dragging before I got the uh, final um, pierce height and cut height and touch and go running properly. You can just see through the reflection there the, the image where it was rubbing. So all I need to do is plumb a 
drain into the uh, water table and get my slats in there, temporary slats. And um, I'll use a table to cut the real slat supports and I can get the table loaded up with uh, slats and water and um, it should be a running unit. So there we go, everything's just working 100%. And as that program runs, um, the cursors track on the screen here, so it's kind of cool if I rerun it. There's the cursors passing along. So there we go, total success finally.